start by introducing Skylar Martin Reda. Skylar is returning to Foothill. They are a physics and biology major. Skylar will be presenting graphical interface for cryomodule signals. They were mentored by Nicole Niveau and Lisa Zacharias at the SLAC National Laboratory Accelerator. And a fun fact about Skylar is that even though they have many interests, their strongest academic passion is astronomy. So Skylar, it's all yours. Feel free to share your, uh, your screen and kick us off. All right, thank you so very much. Um, I have my uh, slides right here. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, all right, so as you said before, um, this summer I was working in, with Stanford's National Accelerator Laboratory uh, under the excellent mentorship of um, uh, Lisa Zacarias and Nicole Nebu. It was really awesome. Okay, uh, so I'm going to get started. So this is what we're going to do today. I'm just going to give you a little bit of context and exactly what it is that I was doing, um, um, how everything just rolled. All right. So first off, um, what is a particle accelerator? So basically it is a machine that in which they launch particles really, really fast um, in order to create x-rays that are then used uh, for a lot of applications, especially in the fields of uh, chemistry and medicine. So they're really important, really useful for just all this awesome advances in science. Uh, specifically, um, uh, so another thing important for this um, presentation specifically is the cryomodules. So it's, it, the cry modules are one of the many parts of an accelerator. Um, basically, if you see the picture, those those little lumpy things. So basically, what they are is like uh, big refrigerators. Because as the particles go really really fast, the materials get really really hot, and they can melt the material. So we don't want that to happen. So we have these cry modules really keeping everything nice and cool. And of course, in order to keep everything running, you need to keep. Um, a lot of checks on them and really get all the signals to make sure that everything's just going according to plan. So basically, um, they use um, a couple of systems in order to keep track of all the signals from the cryo modules. Um, and one particular uh, program that they were using was a pie strip tool that we was just not really efficient and it was just a little annoying to work with in the day-to-day -day life. So I was tasked with um, making a new software that was able to replace this old software um, and just make it a little easier to handle all of the signals that we're getting from the particle accelerator. All right, so basically the materials that I used um, real fast is just Ubuntu, Anaconda, PyDM, GitHub, Simulacrum, and Python, and I'm gonna explain them right now. So for Ubuntu, uh, basically my computer runs on Windows, but most of the programs run on Linux. So what Ubuntu did uh, was just allow me to really handle the Linux operating system in my computer, so I was able to handle all of the other programs. Then Anaconda is a program that allowed me to uh, get all of the software um, inside of my computer, really get everything set up so I could start working. Then PyDM, I used it with the, uh, it's called the PyQT uh, Designer, uh, which is basically a platform in which I was able to design all of the software visually. And then GitHub is like, it's a, an, an online repository. So like a big cloud in which I was able to get all of my uh, code from, uh, and also I could uh, upload my own code so it could be edited with different uh, members of the team. Then Simulacrum is a private um, instance of a simul simulator of the particle accelerator um, from which you can actually control some of the signals without actually affecting the actual machine because that can be a little dangerous. Um, there were a little bit of troubles there, but we're going to get into that later. And then finally, everything was coded using Python. Um, so yeah. Uh, so basically, all the methods that I used in order uh, for this project was first, I needed to set up my computer. I found this to be the most informative and rewarding part of my um, internship because it allowed me to really learn how my computer worked, how different operating systems work. And here I'm talking Windows and Linux, um, how to install um, everything, how to use an online repository, which is amazing when you're making codes and when you need to pull codes. Um, so just in a computer science, environment, it is amazing to have a good knowledge of an online repository. Then, um, of course, I needed to get um, in going with my Anaconda uh, to get on my softwares and packages. Then the PyDM and the Python, that's where I created my interface. There were issues using the testing with Simulacrum, just because I didn't really have um, 
like my operating system just did not like simulacrum, so I could really use it. And then the GitHub in order to push um, code, so uh, upload it to the cloud and then pull the code, so take it down from the cloud so I can work on it. So basically, um, here I have some mild research results of what I was able to do. So if you can see in the images, um, the first one, there's just like a, a little part where you can add time plots. Um, so you can uh, see how the signals progress through time. And in the lower part, you could add signals so you can really monitor exactly the information that you needed to monitor. And then in the low, the lowest uh, picture um, to the left is my favorite um, part from the interface. Um, that's what we would call the signal setup. So basically right there is like the menu that from which you could edit all the time plots. And then in the bottom part is just a way to man uh, of handling the signal. So you have a way to make it visible to uh, say which win which signal you want to do, uh, which Y axis, the color, the opacity, all that good stuff, really very my favorite part. Um, from conclusions, we do need a lot of things from the, um, like a lot of things need to be done in order to really finish that uh, software. So a lot of debugging needs to be done because for example, we run into this issue in which time plots just like kept piling onto each other. We could not figure out why. So there's some debugging left to do. We also need to connect some buttons because, for example, uh, we have the time manipulation in which you could actually man um, control the time um, time span of your time plots. Uh, all of the buttons are there, but they're not doing anything. And of course, there's all the testing that needs to be done with the simulacrum, which I wasn't able to do since I wasn't really able to get it running on my computer. Um, basically, for reflections, uh, this was a truly, truly rewarding experience because I was able to learn so much about computers. I knew next to nothing, and now I really can navigate all the systems in my computers, and I am able to code in Python now because that's something I wasn't able to do before. And it was really cool also to see how everything worked inside of the lab and how teamwork is really important in order to get all of your stuff going. Something funny also that I learned is how to Google things because in computer science, there's a lot of things that you just don't know. And sometimes you don't know how to look for the help. And so I learned how to, where to look for help and how to ask for the help that I need uh, for any future projects that I might have. So it really was amazing and wouldn't change it for anything. So yeah, um, I wanna thank Oh, of course, my mentors, Lisa Zacarias, uh, Nicole Neville, and the rest of the Slack team for making really just like an awesome works uh, space. And of course, the whole team of DSLI for guiding us through um, all this internship experience. So uh, Sophia, Marisa, Steve, and Milani. So thank you so much.